Welcome, everyone. Uh, episode 10, Season 2, Hit It Where They Mow, Talking Golf in Texas. And we got a great show for you today. I'm very excited. Before we get rolling, I want to talk about our sponsors. This show would not be um, possible without these great sponsors. And number one, right off the bat, Niagara Conservation, which is very involved with the LPGA Tour, the Volunteers of America tourney, Tournament coming up at the, in the Colony in late September. And here's Tricia to tell you more about Niagara Conservation. Thanks, Pat. And thanks, Niagara, for your support of so many nonprofits, including the Volunteers of America 125 plus years of national support for those in need. Are you tired of compromising between performance and water efficiency in your bathroom? Well, Niagara has the perfect solution for you. With almost 50 years of expertise, they've mastered the art of creating top-notch toilets, bidets, and more that save water without sacrificing performance. Don't miss out on this bathroom revolution and upgrade your space today. Niagara products are available nationwide. I also want to thank the Golf Bank of Texas, Veritex Bank. Um, Malcolm Holland, Martin Thomas and Company, a wonderful bank for personal banking or small commercial lending. Veritex Bank, check them out. I'm Veritex, but their name comes from Veritas, and that means integrity. So you want to check out Veritex Bank. And my two golf courses that sponsor me, the Tempest Golf Club outside of Longview, uh, TempestGolfClub.com, wonderful golf course, East Texas Golf as it was meant to be, tall pines, big hills, creeks. You'll love playing the Tempest. Go online and book your tee time with them. And then what a treat, just up the highway, less than 90 minutes from where I'm sitting right now in Dallas, is Dorna Hills Country Club in Perry Maxwell's backyard. And Perry Maxwell was the premier course designers in the history of golf. And you can get a very affordable non-resident membership there. Check them out. Google Dorna Kills. Check into their deals for non-resident memberships. Or have your pro shop call them for a day of golf at Dorna Kills. My special guest is Mr. Dean Overturf of Dallas. And uh, he is a wonderful golfer. He's been a wonderful golfer for many years. He's got a great record in golf as a junior, as a college player, as a professional and as an amateur golfer at the highest level and we're going to go into all that he now teaches golf and he works out at uh, oak hollow golf course out in mckinney which is under construction right now but should be reopening in the fall of 2023 and he's just a great guy and a dear friend mr dean overturf welcome to my podcast or our podcast Hit it where they mow. And as you know, we love to talk about golf. We're going to talk about your golf today. Welcome to our show. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the uh, invite. You're welcome. And uh, can't wait to get started. Well, you just said something that really surprised me. You said before golf, and I thought there was nothing. And you said no. There was marbles, and there was, what was it, ping pong? I mean, come caroms, on. Caroms. Caroms. What is caroms? Caroms is a, uh, it's kind of like pool, and you you shoot little um, wood discs on a board. I had no and idea. And there's pockets. There's four pockets. And, uh, you know, there's two different colors, and you, you know, shot them till you won, kind of like uh, playing eight ball. So it's not shuffleboard. No. Not with sawdust. No. It's, it's not with a billiards. Cue, with a cue stick. It's with you hit you flick it? With a cue stick. Yeah. With a cue stick. Yeah. Caroms. Yeah. And you were pretty good at caroms as a young boy. That's and you were in Los Angeles, California? Yes. Wow. And um ping pong. Yeah. Now, table tennis, you know, I was living in Atlanta and I had an outdoor I had a detached screened in porch. A house out in the backyard. We turned it into the Cotton Bowl with a ping pong table. We had great matches. Right. I was accused of cheating. I, my especially was a quick serve, but I wasn't as good as the guys I was playing. If I had to try to do something, but you were good at ping pong. Yeah. Um, you know, back then you only had uh, the sand paddle and the rubber paddle, basically. The sand paddle. Yeah. Um, and uh, to play in the competition. 
uh, you could only serve the ball by um, you had to cup your hand so you couldn't spin it. You couldn't quick serve either. Right. Could you? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that kind of uh, you know hand-eye coordination, I guess, uh, which would help my golf. Yeah, and, uh, and I, that's where we're going to start with junior golf. And uh, uh, you brought some uh, visual aids today, but one of them was a great article written about you when you were about nine years old in Houston called Little Hogan. I thought it was Little Ben, but it was Little Hogan. Right. And um, you well, they, played at a nine-hole course, you said, near where the Astrodome is? Yes. Tell us about it's that. the old, uh, it was called Briarwood uh, Country Club. It was a, uh, a public course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I had a nine hole par three and and just a it was a mediocre golf course, but uh anyway, it was right up the street from our house. so how I got involved was uh when we moved down the street um, I found a old wooden six iron at the somebody left at the house wooden shafted wooded and shafted wow. and I found a tennis ball, and I was just bored I guess and got in the backyard and was swinging around and that's um, I found out over at the golf course they were having a the Houston Golf Association mm -hmm. was having a clinic and a, they were going to have a tournament there and I wanted to join it and I was only uh, nine and I wasn't old enough to get in it so my parents knew I loved golf and, and uh, they hooked me up with uh, the head professional there. He was a uh, Harry C. Scott. He was from Carnoustie. Oh my gosh! And uh, he and his wife were both uh, champions. Do you have something in uh, common there with Bobby Jones? Uh, you know, they, they they say that Bobby Jones learned the the Carnoustie swing because that's where. Um, Stuart Maiden was from, and so this Harry C. Scott was a Scottish guy. Oh yeah, he was he was uh, very old uh, yeah. at that time. He was probably eighty years old when he was. And to show you the difference, uh, we got six lessons for twenty five dollars. You you're getting a little emotional about Harry Scott? Did he teach you the fundamentals? Which you know, golf really is yeah. the fundamentals, isn't it? Sorry. That's okay. It's good. It's good. It meant a lot to you, didn't it? Yeah. It's it's not just Harry. It's all the people yeah. that uh, help you along the way. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Harry kind of took me under his wing. And, yeah. And... Uh, then uh, golf has kind of kind of saved me. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the passion and the drive, mm -hmm. and uh, you know God kind of put me in the right places at mm -hmm. the right time. Mm -hmm. Well. Um I want to mention that Houston Golf Association thing because that'll help us move on yeah. with your career here. And, and uh, man, I, you know, I, I've admired your golfing for a long time. I don't know if you know that or not. And by the way, I that goes back to when you and Mossman won that partnership over in Tyler. So I was that you were, I guess. I don't know if you were still at the University of Texas or you were just out yeah, of it, but right. but we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. But yeah. that's, that's the first time I saw you play golf. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't win it. No, but you tied. You tied. Yeah, we tied. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and you played you played really well. Yeah, I yeah. played well, and and my partner, <laughs> he just wasn't used to the East Texas sand kind of, <laughs> and he could not hit it. Um, had a little trouble with the wedge. You said. Well, he he kept hitting it fat all the time. And I, <laughs> this guy was an unbelievable putter, right? Richard and, Mossman, right? No, Ken. Ken Mossman. And Mossberg. 
Ken Mossberg. Excuse and me. I was, I was saying, God, can I just get this guy on the green, man? And, and he could. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a scramble. It wasn't a no, good shot. It no, was it, you played your yeah, own ball. Oh, your own out. ball. That's right. But there were guys like Mark Hayes. Yeah. And, and uh, oh, who's the other really good player that you always would come down with Hayes? Uh, he he played well on the tour for long. Landy Miller. No, um, he went into the, the Houston the. Oklahoma Golf Hall thing did a good thing. They put them in together. Yeah. And um, I hate it that I'm having brain freeze right now. But it'll come to me later. But he, okay. he was uh, uh, a terrific player. That, uh, that That's the kind of people that would show up at Briarwood back in the day. Yeah. But what I was going to say is you won the Houston Golf Association scholarship. That's correct. <laughs> to play college golf. And you elected to go to the University of Texas. So talk about that a little okay. bit. Okay. Well, um Coming out of the city of Houston, mm -hmm. um, I won all the HGA mm -hmm. divisions, probably up mm -hmm. through uh, your 16, 17 mm -hmm. year old. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Houston Golf Association gave a full scholarship to anywhere in the state of Texas. They gave one and then they split one. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, very. Uh, a dynamic and uh, professionally done and I was lucky enough to uh, to win the full scholarship mm -hmm. and um, I always I grew up wanting to go to the University of Houston being from Houston I knew a lot of their players mm -hmm. they used to come out to the place that we uh, that I practiced at played at and um, anyway, Dave Williams was not very nice to me on my visiting day, and uh, he didn't want to offer me anything until this HGA uh, right. scholarship was finalized. So mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, the University of Texas, uh, George Hannon, uh, was going to offer me something, and and. Uh, all my friends, or one of my best friends, uh, Don Evans, he uh, unbelievable guy was there, and uh, so Don Evans from Houston was already going to Texas. Yeah, yeah. and well, he he and I um, we were best of friends, and okay. and um, I had a lot of. Other Eugene Mitchell, uh, Randy Geiselman was there. Uh, a lot of Texas uh, people. But when I saw the freshman team of Chip Stewart, Rick Massengale, Buddy Hamilton, uh, they were undefeated as a freshman team, and I, I was always, you know, I wanted to be a part of that. So they were a year ahead of you. Yeah, then. they were okay. ahead of me. And who's uh, Buddy Hamilton? Of course, I know Rick Massingill and yeah. Chip Stewart. Well, Buddy, Buddy was from Amarillo, played okay. at Amarillo Tascosa. Okay. And, uh, he could. Buddy was phenomenal ball striker. Uh, mm -hmm. He could pick up a club once a month and go out and hit fifteen greens. I mean, it was. That's really good. Buddy, but you know, we all have our weaknesses. Weaknesses in <laughs> golf, and uh, he was not a great putter. Okay. Uh, needless to say. So, so you went to Texas and you played with Rick and Chip and uh, yeah. um, I and think then later on I think you played with with the uh, you know my, my trusty sidekick George Mayshock right. who was a maybe a year behind you or or two. Yeah. We we kind of uh, the University of Texas had a decent program but they mm -hmm. were not one of the elite programs I think in the college golf ranks and, and your, uh, your era was like the late 60s right right 66 mm -hmm. um, through 70 okay and um, so we kind of set the bar for I thought for where it is today mm -hmm. um, and all the players that have come after that because we we had um, we won the conference in 68 mm-hmm um, we beat the University of Houston on their home course at Pine Forest Country Club. Um, in their All America, in their All America tournament, which mm -hmm. was the biggest college tournament in the nation at that time. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it was on TV. It was uh, Williams was a great um, promoter. Who, who was on that team with you that won the All America at Pine Forest in Houston? It was uh, Chip Stewart, Rick Massengale, and George Tucker. It George was, Tucker. George Tucker About was six out five, of, six six, yeah, six tall yeah, guy. Yeah, big tall guy. Yeah. And, uh, he was out of San Antonio, Alamo Heights. That's right. Yeah. And was George on that team? Um, or did he come the next he year? He might have come the next year. Okay. I'm not positive okay. on that. Okay. Um, and uh, so from there, we kind of, uh, you know, we kept getting better. And, mm -hmm. and um, we finished fourth in the NCAA mm -hmm. that year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we never played good at the NCAA. I don't know what the reason was. Well, fourth's pretty good. Yeah, it was. We, yeah. My three years is uh, fourth, eighth, and sixth. Okay. So then we, when you we left, were getting close. We yeah. were getting close, and, the, and I tried to redshirt my senior year Yeah. because uh, the um, – scuttlebutt as they'd say that Crenshaw was going to come That's right. with Kite on the team and Machok and all these uh -huh. other players I said man we're going to win the NCAA and you and know you I right. want to do that <laughs> and uh, the golf coach uh, he said no we need you this year so um, I wanted to redshirt my senior year but as it turned out it was good for me because mm -hmm. uh, not only did we win the conference, I won the conference individually and uh, was captain of the team and, uh, you know, part of Texas yeah. history, yeah. Uh, college history. And you were sixth uh, at the NCAA your senior year, um, something I, like that. I don't, I don't know yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, but they, it, let's just let everybody know, at that point, you were playing matches, yeah, and they. I didn't realize they changed that. Yeah. Crenshaw didn't want to play a bunch of matches, and well, the, the reason uh, the Southwest Conference was playing match play mm -hmm. to decide the champion, mm -hmm. and um, you would play on a home and home basis every mm -hmm. other year. You mm -hmm. trade off, mm -hmm. and our golf coach, when we'd play the University of Houston, go down and play them. It, it was always metal play and a. NCAA was metal play, and mm -hmm. so he wanted to change the conference to metal play because it was going to give the best team. Exactly. And uh, they bucked it for a long time, and it's kind of funny how it's turned in that, you know, it went to metal play, uh, the conference and stuff, and now the NCAA changed the from being a metal play uh, final, it's, it's now match play. You know. Right, and I the first show that I did on Hit It Where They Mow was with the Cootie Twins. And uh -huh. They won that yeah. national championship last year, right? And that awesome. was a lot of pressure, you know, playing uh, the the matches. Yeah. Even though you might be the better team, you got to right. be better that day, right? Um, but you had a great career there at the University of Texas, yeah. and um, um, now, you know, back in the day, this would be good for people because you graduated around 1970 from the University of Texas, and yeah. Crenshaw's come in as a freshman, and George makes a great point about Crenshaw, by the way, uh, that he probably would have had about three or four more, at least three or four more tour wins and probably a major or two if he'd have done like Spieth and played one year at Texas and then turned pro because he was playing such great golf yeah. in, in his college years. But there was no uh, Corn Ferry Tour. There was no B Tour when you turn, I'm assuming you turned pro right after you left Texas because you were such a good player. Yeah, um, yeah, I kind of I didn't really know what I was doing to be truthful. Um, well, who does at 21 yeah, or two? But you try. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's a very difficult road. Need, needless to say, and you'd have to go back then. It was Q schools. They had a satellite tour but it was run a lot different than well you're playing for your own now. money more or less yeah it was a, yeah. a mini tour yeah that gil morgan they said sammy rachel said yeah. gil morgan and one or two other guys kind of dominated yeah, yeah they yeah yeah sometimes that's uh so anyway i uh also i had to deal with the being in the army and oh i didn't know reserves that. yeah okay okay so that was six years and you can't you know, every month you got to have a drill. I didn't and, know that, Dan. 
Okay. And uh, two weeks every summer, no matter where it hit, you know, it, uh, you had to be there. Okay. And so it made it pretty difficult to play golf. Right. So let, let's just say that, uh, you know, if you didn't get your tour card, and if you got it, there wasn't an exempt tour back then. You had to keep making cuts, or you had to qualify on Monday as a right. rabbit. Yeah. So it was just very difficult. At some point, you transitioned into playing high-level amateur yeah. golf. So tell us about that. Well, I, was, I basically quit for about three years in the uh, you late. You quit golf? Yeah, seventy in the 70s. Wow. I, um, I had a friend who had a construction company, and he put me to work. Uh, starting out in the field, he was a general contractor, and I, I worked my way up from shoveling sand to being a uh, form carpenter to a, um, a foreman and job superintendent. And uh, so I ran uh, a bunch of jobs. And uh, one of the other friends of mine in, in that organization, uh, he went into business for himself. And um, I didn't go with him right when he went into business, but I, I stayed with the Paragon Group. So, um, very large uh, development company, mm -hmm. and I did uh, tenant finish out on a 12-story um, high rise mm -hmm. right across from uh, Presbyterian Hospital, and uh, over on Meadow Road over there by Rambler Street? Road, mm -hmm. over by Royal Oak, yeah, so, mm -hmm. right, that, yeah. that yeah. Presbyterian, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's right across the street from it almost. You, yeah, you can see it. Sure, it's 12-story. And um, so anyway, after that, I, I went to work uh, for that friend of mine in the concrete business, and I did that for when it was hot back then. You know, you, um, you know building was booming and mm -hmm. everything. And, mm -hmm. and then I kind of got interest back into golf a little bit, and I, I decided that it, being in the concrete business, uh, everything you do, you bend over, and I was a... Uh, not only a foreman or superintendent, but I was a working mm -hmm. uh, foreman. Sure. So everything you do in concrete, you bend over, and so, so your back. On you, it? Yeah, very tough on your back, and and uh, so then I kind of started having a idea as I was getting older uh, to play. I, I understood that. It's one thing to be pretty good in your area, but you need to play as much golf as you can in other areas of mm -hmm. the United States mm -hmm. so that see if your game can travel, yeah, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, it, uh, I started playing um, amateur golf again and, and uh, had some success. We played uh, partners. We won the Temple Cup a couple of times, my brother-in-law. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Hughes. Hughes. Lloyd yeah. Hughes, good player. And the Temple Cup was at Crown Colony yeah, for Lufkin. Arthur Temple. Mm -hmm. That's a high-level partnership right. tournament in the state of Texas and right. the South. Yeah. yeah. And then Chip Stewart and I won it twice together. And then Chip and I won the um, uh, Champions Cup, which was at one of the premier two-ball. Still is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, People all over the United States come to Champions to play mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and um, that was a. So, so you transitioned back into playing, yeah, and yeah. and you High level. said I'm going to pursue amateur yeah. golf. I, well, I'm, yeah. I, I I love tournament golf. Yeah, I, I'm, that's one thing I miss today. I mean, it's yeah. tournament golf. I always was a turn on for me. I, yeah. I had a. Um, I could be playing normal kind of so-so, but if a tournament came around, I could flip the switch, and um, I would become a pretty fierce competitor. You know, Mike Booker has this book uh -huh. out now called The Tournament Player's Handbook, and he makes this great distinction. You're either a tournament player or you're a golfer who plays tournaments. And Lloyd Hughes will get a kick out of this if Lloyd watches the show. Yeah. I'm definitely in the second <laughs> camp. Even though I've been around golf my whole life, I've loved golf my whole life, I'm a golfer who plays in tournaments because there's no telling how much I choke during the tournament. But even though I have good rounds occasionally yeah. in tournaments, but you're a tournament player. You always have been. 
right. Elaborate on that. I mean, it's just a ma you, you say it's a turn on. You you like the competition. Yeah. It brings the best of you out, right? right? Well, I always, um, I guess, growing up, not having a whole lot, I always wanted the trophy. You know, yeah. The, that was a big, uh, you know, I wanted the on the carousel. Let's get the ring. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's what motivated me, and mm -hmm. that's you know it. Uh, drove me to practice and and uh, get as good as I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, almost Hogan asked you out worked everybody else, right? Uh, or you tried to, you know. I skipped over something. I want to go back to yeah something you and George share and Ben Crenshaw, and that is you know my book that I I'm, I'm gonna promote my first yeah. book when golf was fun. Yeah. The, Tales from the late Great Beer and Barbecue Circuit, yeah. you won the Center Invitational. And that, my friends, is a major accomplishment because that's some of the best college players in the South playing that. Yes. And you won it in 1971, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's right. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, the Center is kind of... The big Calcutta. The it's whole. kind of funny. I, I never played in it. I, as a junior, um, you know, we didn't have the money to go to USGA junior tournaments and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the barbecue, the center, you hear about it, you hear about it, but center and surrounding areas would send out scouts mm -hmm. to the All-America tournament, which was held in April. Billy Bob Thomason, he and, was the guy that worked it. And yeah. okay, so they would send out scouts to see these college players and uh -huh. who they who they might want to yeah. get in the Calcutta. Right, you know, it's like buying a horse. Right, and uh, so anyway, at uh, at that time, it was uh, it was strictly made up of uh, college players. Right, University of Houston, almost all their players played in it. Uh, uh, but I mean, there was you know, fantastic players. And center was this little nine hole course at small greens, uh, you know. Grainy. Yeah, yeah grainy, what, <laughs> you know, but it was. Um, oh, it was, Bill Rogers said, it, you just keep going around it, it right? Was, yeah. Well, it was, it, yeah. was, it was kind of, uh, it was awesome in that um, we stayed with uh, John Pig and his, his yeah. dad, Franklin. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, who helped design the course. And, uh, you know, I was amazed coming up from Houston that you could, you know, sleep with your windows open and <laughs> leave your wallet on your front seat of your car and yeah. keys in your car if you wanted to. And, you know, and I, I, it was it was just a, a really neat deal. And uh, on their uh, night that they sold the Calcutta, it was a huge... Uh, Barbecue, uh, barbecue, they had lights. Chicken. Yeah, barbecue chicken. They yeah. had the lights down by the creek. I mean, it, yeah. it was it was a big deal. It was it was a lot of fun. I tried to describe that in my book. You know mm -hmm. uh, that you know it was a big deal, and the guys yeah. on the uh, PA system selling the players, and yeah. you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about an NCAA champion here. You know, who's <laughs> going to give me a thousand dollars? Yeah, and it's just a great deal, and. Um, um, and you won the darn thing, and 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 May Shocker won it, and Ben yeah. Crenshaw. I didn't realize Ben went twice. Yeah, he had too much fun the first year, and he won it the well, second that, year. See, that was the year I I won. Oh, when he was had it? Too, okay. okay. When he had too much fun. Yeah, that's the only time you <laughs> beat Ben Crenshaw. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the late John Granger from North Texas and uh -huh. Fort Worth said he never was able to beat Crenshaw in a tournament. So you can you can say that you did there and. Uh, yeah. And so anyway, I want you to show the one that you can hold up here. Yeah. These are all your USGA medals, and that means you were medalist. Show it. To, well, I think you can get it on the camera. Yeah. You were medalist in these USGA qualifiers, right? right. Low qualifiers. And, yeah. and, and you played in 18 different USGA events. events. And you've got the, the Shoal Creek medallion. Oh, well, that that was just to kind of fill out this. Yeah, thing. but I mean, uh, you got to... That, Th that, that was the U.S. amateur uh, when you played. I got to play in the amateur at Shoal Creek. That's indicative of the type of courses you played yeah. in these tournaments, these right. USGA events. USGA, uh, they hold uh, awesome venues. 
uh, where you can. Uh, That's beautiful, by the way. I, you it's play, well done, Dean. Yeah. You you play uh, great golf courses, uh, Oakmont. Uh, so you played Oakmont. Shoal, Shoal Creek, uh, Jack's Course, Muirfield. Muirfield uh, Village. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, my favorite course. Uh, Champions was uh, yeah. played the amateur at Champions. Prairie Dunes is my favorite course. I other than Pebble Beach. Yeah, Prairie Dunes, great facility. Uh, you made it to the, that was the, was that the U.S. Mid-Amateur? Yeah, the Mid-Am. And you made it to the quarterfinals? Not, uh, maybe in, um, I don't know if I made the quarterfinals. Well, I played Bob Lewis. You played Bob Lewis, who was a Walker Cup. Yeah, the Walker Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was fun. Yeah. And what was your what was your highest finish in a USGA event? Did you did, did you ever make it to the quarters of the semis? No, I think you did it at Brook Holly. Yes, I, I in the uh, national pub links. I made it to the semifinals. Uh, lost in the semifinals. Um, well, that wasn't at Brook Holly, but no, that was at in um, Broughton, Colorado, which is outside of Denver. I'm, I may be thinking the trans miss when they no, had Brook Hollow. At Brook Hollow no, Brook Hollow was right. The, uh -huh. uh, I, I um, lost to David Lind in the semifinals. I would have played uh, Jay Siegel in the finals if I'd won that match. I believe Siegel beat Halstead in that, in that semifinal. That right? Yeah, well, I remember my friend Mickey McShann and I, he's from Wichita Falls, we were going to go out and watch Bill Halstead. Uh -huh and get, get a bite to eat at lunch and we got out there and bill was changing his shoes he wow. said you guys are a little too late siegel had beat him like four and three yeah. or something like that but siegel i think went on to win yeah he, he yeah he went on to win i went out there to watch that match did you okay uh but amateur golf at the highest level that was that was something you really enjoyed wasn't it and, and like you say the great courses you played and and you get to play uh, some great players that are not only in your area, but like the Walker Cupper. I was I played uh, Bob Lewis. Mm -hmm. I played uh, David Eager. Um, yeah, David. He was a Walker Cupper. He had mm -hmm. just come back from the Walker Cup when mm -hmm. I played him mm -hmm. uh, at Long Cove out in um, Hilton, Hilton Head. Head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, it it just it makes you a better player when you're playing against better players. Yeah, you have to elevate, don't you? Yeah. 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 Um, one of the things I love uh, is that you had that senior. So, so you get to be 50 years old and you get what they call a mulligan. You have a yeah. chance to play on the PGA Tour Champions, they call it now, or yeah. Senior Tour, and of course, Don January, we just lost uh, a couple of months ago, was one of the starters of that in 1980. All right. It really was fashioned after the Legends Tournament that was at Onion Creek in Austin. By the way, I thought of the name that was with Mark Hayes that always played at Briarwood, Doug Toole. Oh, yeah. Doug Toole, great player, yeah. you know, one on the tour, and yeah. he was down there when you yeah. and Mossberg, right. y'all beat him. That You know, you didn't beat Maxie and... Um, Terry Brown, but well, that's that's who won the playoff. I think. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I think they ended up having to. No, they won it on the course. It was the yeah. following year they might have had right. a putt off for it. Yeah, right. <clears throat> but talk about your going out on the senior tour. I think that's really something a lot of people may not know about you. You had this great amateur record. By the way, you won the the Texas Mid Amateur. That's correct. Once or twice. Once. Once. Uh, runner up uh, in Wichita Falls. Uh, um, Which is a one, big one deal. Yeah. yeah, I won it in, in Midland in '95. I was at uh, Midland Country Club. Yeah, Midland yeah. Country Club. I was Player of the Year in okay. the state of Texas in '95. Good for you. And uh, I had won, uh, you know, Dallas City Championships, uh, a couple cities, and uh, the Tournament of Champions. Uh, yeah, I've won it three times. Now, that's something they don't have in Dallas anymore, do they? No, it was sponsored by the Dallas Morning News, and they quit okay. doing that, I think. And that was all the champions from all the clubs in this area. And you played in a tournament, and, 
And yeah, that was a pretty cool tournament, wasn't it? Yeah. It was I remember guys like Wade Adams yeah. played in it, oh, yeah. some of the guys that just old. Some good players, yeah. Yeah, you and I go way back. Yeah. We know all the same people. I know. Well, so <laughs> when I got to be 45, I kind of zeroed in. I, you know, my goal was always to, I wanted to be a professional on the mm -hmm. on the tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I played as much competitive golf as I could for when I turned 45 to 50 and uh, and then uh, Art who uh, Art Hody out of Houston he was my mentor another mm -hmm. guy that meant a lot to me and mm -hmm. uh, was my teacher and was like a father Art grandfather Hody Hody excuse me yeah he's in the Golf Hall of Fame for a uh, club professional he was at uh, Riverbend in Houston mm -hmm. for 20 year, 20 plus years, and worked at Houston Country Club and Fred Haas out in El Paso. He was he was a uh, um, just a tremendous individual. And uh, not the so, Freddie Haas, but another guy named Fred Haas. Yeah, because the Freddie Haas, <clears throat> excuse me. No, the original, the the fa uh, the guy that beat Byron Nelson. Yeah, he was in El Paso. Yes. See, you're you're filling in some uh, things I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, you learned from Freddie Haas. No, I didn't. Oh, no, you did? Yeah. No, from Art Hody. Mm. He was an assistant for ah, him out there. Okay, now all right. Okay, all right. All right. So anyway, um, you know, when I turned fifty, I decided to uh, wanted to give it a shot. There you go. And. Uh, you're living here in Dallas, right? Living in Dallas, and uh, Chip and I had played in a two-man tournament up in uh, New York at uh, Oak Hill. Uh, unbelievably hard golf course. <laughs> you told me that course. In September, <laughs> when it's wet and long. You're hitting fairway woods oh, and God, par it fours. Is, is trying, to make, trying to make pars. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, we met a guy, and he, he said, you know, you're going to... You might ought to consider going to St. Augustine, Florida, where my course is. We hold a qualifier for the uh, senior tour every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, know, I don't know about that. So I thought about it, and they had a qualifier here in San Antonio, and I decided to go to Florida. Um, I went, I took a, I flew out there and played the course and see if I could play it or liked it or whatever, and I thought it was okay. Um, I'd be scared to death of it in today's deal, but back then it, you know, was. What course was that? At Marsh Creek. Okay. Golf Club. And, okay. Um, so near, near Jacksonville, there, right? It, well, it's yeah. Saint Augustine. Saint Augustine. South. There you go. There you yeah, go. and it's my bad. It's yeah. right next to the ocean there. Sure. Kind of. Sure. So anyway, it's uh, it had a lot of peat die stuff. Yeah. A lot of target golf. Target golf, big time. Anyway, so I go there and I win this thing. Uh, I, God, I had an unbelievable lead for three rounds and or going into the th last whole third round. It, I guess I got complacent. I don't know. I hit I hit a bad shot and I make triple bogey on the last hole. And, it, and you know now instead of a I don't know at that time I probably had a five or six shot lead at the Q school. At the Q school. Wow. Yeah. And so. You know, then it brought in into reality. You know, I got a lot of work to do the last round. Anyway, I end up winning the Q school, and then I don't. Uh, I go to the final school, which was in Orlando, and that was at that time. It was about a month later, and um, so you won one of the regional Q regionals. Do they have one in San Antonio, which yeah. which San Augustine? Right. You won it. Okay, so yeah. now you're going to the yeah, I'm, final. You know, you're, yeah, you're feeling good, all that, but. Um, so anyway, I go there and I I don't play very good and so I'm out. Uh, you know, I I, I miss uh, getting on the senior tour and so I to, I wanted another try at it and uh, so I played. They had a satellite tour mm -hmm. which was called the Heartland Senior Tour mm -hmm. and uh, you basically you're playing for your own money. Okay. Basically, and uh, they had a schedule of about eleven tournaments all. Throughout the Southwest, uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, Kansas, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, and Texas, mm -hmm. and um, 
so I won three out of 11 events on it and was their leading money winner. And uh, that kind of kept me competitive up to the next Q school. But during that time, uh, my teacher um, had a heart attack. Hmm. Mr. Hody? Mr. Hody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that, I didn't know anything about the golf swing. Basically, back in those days, I didn't worry about the golf swing. It was played by feel, and if I had a problem, he could fix it in a day, uh -huh. you know. Um, and um, so I was playing poorly, and... Um, I got um, one of my friends, Stan Altgill, said... I'm so glad you brought up Stan, because I, I was wanting to mention him. Yeah, what uh, a great guy. Yeah. Uh, he said, come on down to San Antonio. We'll see what's going on, and we'll try to do it yeah. well. Stan was, uh, at that point, was uh, very radical. I would call it radical in today's deal. He was all into bone structure and yeah. how your bones moved, and you know more of the biomechanics, I guess, right. of today. Right that they do uh, he would have loved all that yeah and um, anyway so he he got me in how I uh, the swing was not my swing but it, somehow I pulled it off and I I get through I go back to St. Augustine I make it through the regional and go to the finals and uh, um, was playing kind of okay but not great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the weather was perfect out in tucson mm -hmm. and everyone was playing good <laughs> and uh, yeah. i was like you know going to the last round i was like in 33rd position or so and <clears throat> come to find out the last round uh, a norther blew in with it was cold rainy um terrible weather and uh, I just gutted it up, and I had one of the low rounds of the day, and everyone else was shooting 78 to 84. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just went by everybody, and I got a got a card. It hit right on the number. And um, wow, you know, got to get out on the senior tour, but it wasn't a. F so you're like 51, 52, something like that. Well, no. It was a conditional card. Oh, okay. It wasn't. You had to be. Oh, no, I understand. It's you very had to be difficult. In, yeah, you had yeah. to be in the top eight sure. at Q School, and the conditionals were eight through uh, sixteen. So. Um, so you got in some tournaments. So I got in some, and uh, my first tournament I got into. Everybody plays at the start of the year, so you there's no way you get right. in a tournament for right. the first month or so. Right. Two months. Right. And my first tournament, I. Um, shot 67 out in uh, California at, uh, at Newport Beach. It was uh, mm -hmm. not that course. We played a new course. It was called Strawberry Fields, I think. Anyway, so I'm in my first tournament, and uh, uh, I'm leading after three holes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leading this tournament. I know. <laughs> I, I parred the first couple of holes, and I <laughs> held an eight iron for an eagle on a par five or something. I don't know. Anyway, it was kind of funny. And I played okay. And then the next week, I went to um, Mexico. Well, um, this is the story I was thinking. Yeah, of, right. This Mexico. Is, yeah, yeah. This so, is great. Uh, Mexico was uh, was good in that um, a lot of the venues that they play on the senior tour these guys have been playing these courses for years uh -huh. and years right they have a tremendous advantage if you've you know for right. a rookie or someone just coming on to, right you just don't know the nuances of the golf course it, you, just, you don't learn it in two days anyway so i'm down there and i gosh i i shoot uh 66 i open with 66 i think the first round i shoot uh 68 um or maybe it was 68 66 and uh, i'm on the practice tee and gary player comes up to me and <laughs> you know i'm going 
wow, you know, he was one of my idols as a kid. Right. Because I was small. Yeah. And uh, he wore black, and, and uh, you know, he was just a... Uh, He's one of the greats. Yeah, one of the greats, and he was so nice. You know, he said, oh, man, I've got a great round. Where'd you go? Are you out of Q school? You know, he was very yeah. personable. Yeah. I mean, most of those guys aren't that way. And yeah. uh, so anyway, it was... Uh, that I, was I, I've forgotten that. That so. was kind of cool, and I, I kind of messed with his mind a little bit. I said, Gary, you know, I got a bone to pick with you. And he said, oh, oh what's that? You know, and I said, well... As a kid, you were playing the Houston Open, and I had Ben Hogan's signature. I had all these players that I would get, you know, as a kid, you know, yeah. your idols. And uh, you wouldn't sign my my book. <laughs> and he says, oh, no, no, don't tell me that. Oh, he felt so bad. And so I said, well, can I get it now? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So, and he... He was uh, generally, uh, what a gentleman. Um, yeah. Know, my wife had... Uh, we were out in Hawaii, and we were on the putting green, and he came over and said hi and talked nice. to us. And, you know, he, just to... Well, finish this finish. story in Mexico, because yeah. this... So anyway, this, so this we're is, in... Yeah. We're, we're, we're uh, 68, 66. We're either one or two shots. And these are 54-hole tournaments, right? Yes. Okay. So, and so we're in second... We're three in rounds. Yeah. second place, maybe by a shot or two, and I'm... my. We're in the second to last group. I'm playing with uh, Hubert Green and um, John Bland out of South Africa. Who Bill Rogers says never missed a fairway. Well, so anyway, yeah. you know, uh, it, uh, the ironic, somebody else is in the last group. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so anyway, we start out, you know, and I'm I'm on the putting green, and I I mean, you know, I'm a I'm a good putter, a really good putter, and. Uh, I couldn't make a five foot putt. I'm going, man, what's Oh the putting green before yeah, the, the putting green round. before. I mean it was <laughs> I was freaking out, you know. So we go to the first tee and and uh somehow it all gelled and so we go on the first hole and I make a twenty footer. Well, I'm off and running, you know, thinking, Well, Hubert Green makes a twenty footer. Next hole, Hubert Green makes another birdie. I make a maybe a par, I don't know. And uh so anyway, I, Hubert Green played probably one of the most phenomenal rounds I've ever seen. Uh, he was, for the first 10 holes, he was nine, eight under par. And on one of the par threes on the front, he had birdied the first six holes in a row. And then on seven, he lipped it from like five feet for a birdie on his par three hole. So he shoots a... Uh, um, front side and seven or eight under and then we go to 10 i'm six under through 10 he's eight under through 10 and uh you know and then we go to the so that this just to interrupt just for a second yeah they talk about drafting off each other so i don't know if you I mean, know, looking I, back was that happening because that that's a, that's uncanny you know yeah, yeah. Uh, well it was it it wasn't. I wasn't so much. Gear, I was just playing golf. I got you. Know, you. That's, I, got you. Yeah. I got caught up in the what you're supposed to. You know, it's what is the yeah. next shot is exactly. So we finally we get around, and I I birdie 17, and I'm i you know he's he's like three or four shots ahead of me. I think at that point. So we're going to the last hole, and it's a dog leg kind of hole with a ravine right on the right edge of the green, and the pins over there by the ravine and uh it's a kind of a rooftop green it's like mm. um so anyway i'm i'm over to the side and i had already hit and i hit it about mm, maybe 15 or 20 feet from the hole and i'm i'm looking at him and he's 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 looking i mean he's aiming over to the right and i'm thinking god man he's got a lead all you got to do is hit it in the center of the green he could four putt and win yeah and uh, so he hits he hits this ball and he hits it a foot. Okay. <laughs> I went over to him. I said, "You were God. That was unbelievable shot." You know. He said, "Well, today was my day, and you know everything. It was just an easy seven iron. I didn't have to hit it hard. I didn't have to hit it easy. It was you know, it's like a walk in the park, right?" <laughs> so anyway, 
Lloyd always talks about if it's your day, it's your day. But yeah. that was your day too, right? You played great. Yeah. Oh, I played great. I mean, so I don't want to get ahead of yeah. you, but yeah. So you end up finishing second to Hubert yeah, Grant, right? So, uh, and I think you made up what 110 grand. Yeah, yeah. It's, the purses, and this was what year was this? Oh, right around 2000, wasn't it? Yeah, right. The purses then were as big as they are now. The, the senior nah, tour really nah, hadn't nah, had nah, the Yeah, it hadn't. It, it, it's they it's had, kind of what it used to be. They had more tournaments. They had 38 tournaments. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was the kind of the zenith of it, really. Yeah. Yeah, it started. Yeah. Yeah. Going. Because Don started it. Those guys started around 1980. And, yeah. You know, like, well, Palmer and Player and them were still playing. I think, I think. Jack and them that was they were kind of fading out but yeah but Hubert Green uh, uh, I remember there's a video or two out there with Ho, with uh, Trevino mm -hmm. and he says you know you can't ever let the butt of the grip get behind the ball you always have to keep yeah. the shaft angle and then he goes unless you're Hubert Green right well because <laughs> he, he was very unorthodox yeah the very, he could play yeah he had unbelievable hands uh, yeah that's one thing when you you until you're out there with those guys yeah you know they're good okay and that they can hit great shots but you don't really appreciate it until you see it up close i mean from some of the positions yeah. and uh I got to play with Aoki, um, Did you know, really? another Hall of Famer uh, out there. Uh, just phenomenal. he was a handsy guy too. Oh yeah, oh, just phenomenal uh, touch and yeah, and uh, you learn a lot. Had that putter. Yeah, was it he, off, off the heel? Right. Yeah, he, he had that toe up. Yeah, yeah he, that toe would be an inch and a half up above the ground, and I. I don't know how he did it. I, there was a putt. I, there was a three footer going down this hill. That, it, it, with the ball gets by the by the hole, it's five feet past, and he could take that and he just just like a little. He just barely he pick it pop, up. Yeah, he just pop it on there and it just roll. See a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, enjoyed. You know. You know, I never thought about this, but uh, I interviewed the guy that owns the Cascades in Tyler now, uh -huh. Mr. Chris Choi, and he owns Coyote Ridge, and he owns Shady Valley in Arlington. Okay. I said, how did the Koreans all of a sudden get so great at golf, especially the women? And he said, well, Sayri Park, mm -hmm. kind of, when she broke through in 98 or whatever and won the U.S. Women's Open, he said, but we, I think we got it from the Japanese. They were ahead of us after World War II, and they loved golf, and it made its way down to Korea. And I never thought about that. Yeah. But obviously, Aoki was a great Japanese golfer. Right. Yeah. Um, well, that probably, I know that was the biggest check you made money oh, yeah. or, or you might have made that much at center i'm not sure no <laughs> <laughs> yeah for someone else maybe. <laughs> right, right 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 uh and uh and so i guess that ended up playing out it's hard to stay out there it's yeah. one of the hardest tours there is to stay yeah. out there and, well i was gone for 20 straight weeks one mm. time and um it's just it's tough people don't uh, well when you're uh, when you're not guaranteed a, yeah. a spot, you have to go there to, you have to be on site. Oh man. Uh, it's pretty hard to leave and then do red eyes and get there. Yeah. Time. yeah. You know, cause if you're there, uh, somebody doesn't show up or has a problem or mm -hmm. whatever you're in. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so anyway, it, it made it pretty difficult. And then I didn't, you know, I didn't, I went back to Q school. I didn't, didn't make the the school, so I started playing some of the. Um, I had some success on the Texas Senior Open, the New Mexico State Open. I tied for first there. Um, Colorado Senior Open, I played in it, and you know, and then it kind of fizzled out, and I yeah. started teaching in 2005. I wanted to get into the teaching. We're, we're running short on time. This okay. is the quickest hour in, in sports. and uh, But I was one thing I wanted to tell you, I don't know if I ever told you, when I first moved back to Dallas in the summer of 2011, I noticed you were playing in one of those senior deals mm -hmm. out at uh, Stonebridge. Okay. And uh, it was the Hills course, I think. It wasn't, right. it wasn't the die course. No, yeah. And I went out 
to see you play. And I got out there, and I think y'all started at eight in the morning or something because you were already gone. Oh, really? But I really want, I, you know, I wanted to, and then I ran into you, I think, at Marsh Lane. Right. And, and, and we rekindled our friendship. Um, you're, so you're now teaching. And uh, and you're also out at Ocala, and you said they're going to reopen there. Yes, they they're redoing their greens and teas. Yeah, uh, new carts. Uh, it's going to be a. But nice, if someone wanted to get nice a hold of you, get a lesson, they they could still do that. Uh, or I'm, are you mainly I'm just ki- doing the. I'm kind of almost retired okay. from that. Uh, okay. I give a few to some of my uh, older customers, or mm-hmm. maybe some of their friends. Um, they've got three. Uh, really good teaching pros out there now. Okay. okay. Um, Steve Clayton, uh, Josh, and it's, John Ensley. It's a good layout. It's going to be a good course yeah. when they get it reopened yeah, in the right. fall. I wanted yeah. to ask you something because we're out of time. Um, it's my big question, and I want to say you answer it. Um, and it happened to me this way. We're having lunch after church. And Larry Arnold is in my Sunday school class. And Larry doesn't play golf. He's never played golf. And he said, Pat, what do you get out of golf? I said, Larry, let me think about that for a minute. And I went home and I thought about it. And I told him later what I got out of it. And I mentioned four things. I just want to, you're on the spot. You don't have time to go home and think about it. Right. What do you get out of golf? What was it about golf um, that made you love it so much? I think it's the um, personal journey that a person goes on. Um, I try to tell people that it's your journey, it's not someone else's journey. It's not what, if he hits a nine iron, that doesn't mean you have to hit a nine iron. If you have to hit a five iron, you hit a five iron. Right. So um, I think having the journey uh, and the it's a game you can't ever beat. Right. You know? right. So you're always, you're always learning. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get better. And um, Yeah, Homero missed a four-footer when he shot 55. Now, he made a bunch of putts, but he missed a little putt, too. I think also it's, mm-hmm. it's been the uh, tremendous amount of people that, uh, that play the game that uh, have influenced my life. I, that's what I, I ultimately I said it's friendship yeah it's the friend you know and Mayshock says it well it's the world's largest small fraternity right um, one other thing I wanted to throw out and we'll be done and I got I said the friendship the you know the the competitive thing right. which really is you against you you've alluded right. that you've said it so beautifully um, and the thing that George emphasizes that I think Maybe we take for granted the beautiful places you get to yes. play, being outdoors and beautiful right. surroundings. I think it's a sereneness too. Mm-hmm. Also, I mm-hmm. mean, I love to practice uh, that's a, by yourself. That's great. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I used to. I played a lot at tennis and uh, loved to go out there at you know six, seven in the evening when the sun's setting and you're out there by yourself and and just you and know you, hit shots. And, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's it's just a, a very uh, well. Here, here's my final thing. one for yeah. you. Okay. okay. The flight of the ball. I think that's what hooks us when we're little kids. Yeah. The ball. Wait a minute. I I need to hit it over that tree or that creek and knock it on that green. And when you do it, you're hooked. Yeah. I think it's uh, you're hooked when you. You realize how hard, I, mean, I never knew how hard the game was until I started teaching it. Right. And I think what hooks you is when you hit that really good shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I used to try to do is have someone to their ability hit the best shot that they could hit. Right. And if you can do that, uh, that gives them the thrill of the game. Yeah. And it's also the thrill of, uh, you see it on TV, but making the putt, mm-hmm. getting a ball in a hole, yeah. you know, whether it's the roll of the shoot, putt shooting nice. a, yeah. a, a pool ball yeah. Or, yeah. or throwing a washer yeah. in a yeah. hole, or, you know, it's, it's all part of, it's a game. Yeah. 
It's the greatest game. Yeah. It's the greatest game they've come up with. Uh, thank, thank those Scots guys for doing it. They hit uh, what it was it. They hit they hit it into rabbit holes and uh, oh uh, gosh, the guy over there that just love the guy that wrote the book. You know, golf on Gullen Hill, Archie Baird. He said the rabbit was the unsung hero of golf because he they they eat the grass to keep it short. Oh, yeah. Dean, I can't thank you enough, man. I, I really. I, it, an hour's gone by, and we've talked yeah, about you've had a wonderful life in golf. I mean, that moment with Hubert Green is I never had anything like that. And, and so I I just think, wow, I mean, that's, you know, to play at that level and to play that well for as long as you have. And just a, a personal note the last time I played with you down at Tawakini, and you've had all these medical issues like we all have when we get older. You played so good. You played so good that day. You drove it in the fairway. You hit it on the green. Uh, it's just a pleasure to get to play golf with you. I hope we get to do it again. We I know, will. I know you're still playing, and I am sure. too. Well, I'm going to play as long as I can because there's a lot of my friends that aren't able to play. Anymore. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, you so much, it. man. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Great show and great individual and enjoyed right. it. And we're going to do it again next week, folks. But for now, that's all from... Hit it where they mow with Mr. Dean Overturf. Dino, I like to call him. He's a great guy and a great golfer. And um, we'll see you next week on Hit It Where They Mow.